Hey guys, I'm just in time, and this is the fast word. So I just got done watching the debate tonight, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of run through who I thought won the debate and recap some of the points and counterpoints and what actually happened. So if you saw the debate tonight and you disagree with me, or even if you agree with me, go ahead and write some comments below, and we'll do some back and forth and kind of debate this thing, hash it out a little bit. Um, if you didn't see the debate, I'm going to basically try to run through it kind of point by point, um, I'm not going to recount the entire debate, but I'm going to try and at least say who won and give you a general idea what the question was and sort of the ebb and flow of the debate. So first off, i got to say, it was a great debate tonight. Um, much better than the last debate, I thought. Unless, of course, you were a staunch um, Romney fan, then you probably loved the last debate. Um, I definitely had to give that one to Romney. Um, I'm going to just say right off the top that I think Obama won tonight. I've got to say it, and hey, I was the first person to call Romney the winner last time. Of most of my friends and other people, they didn't want to believe it, but I came right out. And I would say, honestly, Romney won the last debate by more points than Obama won this debate. But nonetheless, I think Obama did what he needed to do. So let's go ahead and look through it and kind of recap the debate point by point. So the first question was posed by a college kid. And he said that he's worried when he graduates from college there aren't going to be any jobs. He's going to graduate in 2014. So what can you do to guarantee there'll be some jobs out there? Romney basically saying, I'll be president in 2014 and I guarantee you I'm going to get you some jobs. And um, Obama basically came out and just said everything he's done for college kids, how he's tried to increase Pell Grants, how he's given opportunities to millions of more kids to go to college. Now the next question was on um, new energy sources and gas prices. And what are we going to do about gas prices? So this one, again, I felt like, was a tie. Um, it didn't really lean one way or the other enough to give it a solid point to either camp. A big part um, of this was basically what can the president really do about gas prices and Romney again said um, gas prices you know were $1.85 when Obama came into office and now they're this high and his main point was if Obama's um, energy policies were working then you would see gas prices going down. But of course everyone knows that's not a very good litmus test for the policies, energy policies of any administration because you saw gas prices go up and down during the Bush years just like you have under every other administration. So I think that was a little bit of a ridiculous argument and I think he would have won the energy argument if it hadn't been for that weak point he tried to make I think saying that you could judge the policies of the administration based on the actual gas prices which I think everyone knows there's not a direct correlation. Anyway, so first two questions are ties. Now, question number three. This one was on question, the third question about tax policy. Obama basically said that he wants to lower taxes for the middle class and for the low income people and that he wants to lower their burden. He agreed with Mitt Romney that they've had it hard, but the difference between the policies is he feels that the people at the higher end should pay a a small percentage more and even out the burden basically. And so that's how he's gonna cover it. Where the real question for Mitt Romney and what still hurts him is that he still hasn't exactly explained how the math works. And if he gives a $5 trillion tax cut, how he's going to pay for that. But question number four, the question of equal pay. Um, Obama basically says, you know, um, Lily Ledbetter. He uses her story, uses her as an example. And of course, he supports the Lily Ledbetter Act. And so that was a good, this was a good position for him. And this question, you know, it was a softball pitch for him. Now where Romney went with this really surprised me. And I think he just blew it on this question. I appreciate the fact that he felt like he was doing such a great service to them to go out and scrape up a few qualified women that he could find in his state. So anyways, I got to give that one solid so to Obama. On this question of how are you different than Bush, Romney basically pointed to the deficit and how much Bush ran up the deficit and how much um, basically he did things he didn't pay for and that he wouldn't do that and that he was going to cut the deficit and that was a big difference between him and Bush. I didn't think he made a very good argument. I didn't think he had a really good, clear um, point to make about how he was different. But Obama then came back and said, hey, I'll tell you basically how Romney's different than Bush because Bush was reasonable when it came to immigration. These issues and on, you know, health care for women, on immigration, on things like that, that, that Romney is much more extreme and much more far right than Bush was. And so I think that played right into the fears that the person who asked the question had. So I thought that was a good point. Um, I thought that one nailed it pretty good. Um, I still give that one a tie, though. I didn't feel like either person really came down strong enough to win that one full on. So now, question number seven was on immigration. And this was actually a pretty interesting question. 
Um, this was asked by a Hispanic woman, and so I felt like this was really something that was going to be tough for um, Romney to come right out and keep basically peace with the Republicans and still answer this question in a way that wasn't going to offend this woman. But I don't think he managed it at all. I got to tell you, this is one of the questions I think he really did bad on this. And the question about equal pay for women, I really felt were the ones where his answer, maybe not offended, but at least insulted the people who were asking the question, which of course for the Equal Pay Act was women, and in this case it was Hispanics, and especially this Hispanic woman who asked the question. So he basically said he's not going to help illegal workers, you know, that he's going to smooth the process for legal immigrants, and he believes in legal immigrants, but that he's not going to help illegal immigrants get jobs, he's going to put things in place so that um, employers will be able to tell if somebody has a social security number or whether they're a legal citizen, and if they're not, they're out. And if an employer hires somebody who's an illegal, they're going to be fined. So basically, he said he's just going to come down harder. And, and he still pretty much stood by his self-deportation claim, which really shocked me. But he came out and said, look, the reason I'm for self-deportation is because I don't want to round up 12 million Americans or 12 million illegal aliens, I guess, and ship them off. So I'm just going to make their life so miserable that they decide to leave themselves. At least that's what Obama's spin was when he came out. So he says, that's what this guy's going to do is just make your life so miserable you finally just have to leave because you can't live here anymore. And that doesn't sound of pleasant for anybody. Right. This was the one been waiting all night for. Everybody knew it was coming. Somebody was going to bring up the Libya question. Oh yeah, Romney came out and basically agreed with him and said, well, he tells you himself, the president says the buck stops with him. I got to agree. I thought that was a little bit petty and kind of small of him. I didn't think that earned him any points, but it's a tough issue. And so he did ultimately come down and said, look, they requested more security. You didn't give it to them. That was denied. I think the American people deserve answers. I think they should know why. Why did you come out with a with one statement first and then you had to change it? And first you didn't say it was terrorism, but now it is. And then almost there was a little sparring going back and forth where he said, you, you said it was a it was a riot or it was a protest for this YouTube movie and you didn't claim for two weeks that it was a terrorist act and then Obama said no wait I came out in the Rose Garden the next day and I said it was an act of terror and then Obama said or then Romney was like you sure is that what you said because I want to get it on record because you didn't say that for two weeks and then Obama was like Candy Crowley who was the moderator for the debate he said you tell her what did I say the next day that she said yeah he said it was an act of terror but at the same time the administration didn't really come out and say it was a terrorist act per se until two weeks later so she kind of said they were both right in a way but anyways it was a funny moment and it was a little bit of that back and forth you don't usually get in a presidential debate this was a fairly lively debate and I think both candidates went in there expecting to take the to be the aggressor and to take the aggressive posture and I think because of that they kind of clashed in the beginning, and I would say that, unlike the last debate, Romney backed off on this one, more so by the end of the debate, and I think Obama had that sort of the aggressive stance and was taking the aggressive pose towards the end. All right, let's move on. So, question number eight was Libya. I gave that one to Mitt Romney. Question number nine is on gun control. Obama basically just said, look, I haven't done anything to try to, you know, put any bans on guns or do anything like that, but at the same time, there's been too many shootings during my administration. I've had to sit down with too many families and I've had to, you know, console too many crying mothers about their sons who've been shot. And I sat in the hospital with a mother and her son. And so anyways, he basically pointed out the issues and said, we need to make sure that people with mental disorders and things like that. I mean, we can affect the the culture of violence in this country, maybe through education and parenting and other things, but there'll always be some mentally disturbed people, and the only way we're going to make sure that this doesn't happen again is to make sure that they don't get weapons and that those mentally disturbed, unbalanced people aren't armed. So anyways, um, I felt like they both made pretty good points on that. I'll give them a tie on it. Question number nine was the outsourcing of American jobs. This was fairly interesting, I thought. So what Romney basically didn't, like a lot of things, touch the issue directly. He basically just talked about how the Obama policies of too much regulation, too much taxation, that it drives companies to um, want to start companies offshore, to basically go to other countries. And that unless you have favorable policies in this country that invite business and that bring them back, that we're not going to end up you know, having the outsourcing and other things come to an end. So I didn't feel like that was a great answer. I didn't feel like that was the one the American people wanted. And then to top it off, he says, 
Right now, the tax rate, corporate tax rates in Canada are 15%. So why would you want to start a company here? You know, an idea that you're an American and that you should want to start a company here in America? What the hell? You're going to just go to Canada because you can make a few more bucks? I mean, I think that really hurt because that showed that mentality of if it's a few bucks cheaper, why not just forego your nation and your loyalty and everything and just go up there and do it? I, uh, so anyways, I don't think that's going to resonate with the American people. I don't think that's what the average American thinks when they sacrifice, when they go to war, you know, military service, whatever you're going to do. Ask not what your country can do for you. I mean, that's not what he's saying there. He's saying if my country doesn't do enough for me, I'm out of here. I'll go make a few more bucks in China and I'll be on that side of the wall. How about that? So anyways, I really didn't feel like that did him. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to perceive it exactly the way I did or read as much into it, but I really didn't think he did himself any favor with that answer on outsourcing. So anyways, for that reason and a couple other reasons, I give question number 10 to Obama. And then finally, the 11th question, the final one, was on... Um, what is the biggest misconception the American people have about you, and how would you dispel that misconception? Which really a great question, you know, I just thought that was a fascinating question. Um, something you really just want to ask, you know, what don't we know about you, or what do we think about you that's wrong? Um, I remember somebody asking Bush at the end of his first term um, to name a mistake he had made or something that he wished he could do different, and he refused. And so I thought that sort of defined him a little bit. And so this same type of thing, I think, except this time it was Obama who's really on the hot seat. And it's, and it's basically, how have you been defined? Well, I guess really in a way both of them. Because you have Romney, of course, who's been, you know, nothing but defined as a rich guy, out of touch, um, corporate, loves to fire people. So he had a lot to dispel. But then Obama at the same time, you know, the idea that he's a socialist, a Kenyan, he's not American, um, all of these foreign values. I mean, it was a great opportunity for him as well. So basically Obama saying, you know, while I admit that Mr. Romney is a nice guy and Governor Romney, you know, may be a great guy, may do a lot in his personal life, but the bottom line is he said that 47% of the American people are basically worthless, are takers, are don't contribute anything, that they won't take responsibility for their own lives, that they basically are just worthless, you know, parasites on our society. So Obama didn't say that exactly, but he reminded people of what he had said. And he said, look, this is what he believes. Let's look at who that 47% is. And then he talked about retired people, people on Social Security who worked their entire lives to pay into it and are now retired and collecting Social Security. Those are parasites. Those are worthless people. Those are takers. So anyways, um, military veterans, military personnel serving overseas right now, disabled people, um, you know, so that's basically who we're talking about. Who are the 47%? People who work hard every day, people who pay sales taxes and state taxes and, you know, all the rest of it, but they just don't make enough money to pay federal income taxes. And for Mr. Romney, that's enough to basically write all those people off and say that they'll never, not only do they not take responsibility for their own lives, but that they will never take responsibility for their own lives. And so if he feels that way, you know, what are you going to expect from him? Whereas if I'm president, I believe we help that 47%, and if that 47% does well, then the whole country anyway, does well. Very interesting debate. I thought it was a great debate. Um, really, the last two debates and the vice presidential debate, too, they've all been entertaining. But this one was very lively. A lot of interaction between the two candidates. I would almost say more interaction than I've seen in maybe any debate up to this point. Um, a little bit of a heated back and forth. I thought Romney looked a little bit sweaty and looked a little bit irritated and a little bit frustrated at times. I thought Obama... Although not seeming overly aggressive, he definitely was getting the shots in. I think he was making the points. And a couple of times, almost, I felt like I got a couple of chuckles out of the audience on some points he made. But I felt definitely smoother, cooler, um, more poised. All right, well, that's more my good. recap of the debate. I'm just in time, and this has been another fast word. And I'll catch you guys right here after the next debate. See you then.